Ever wondered how to make fun characters like this? Well, keep watching whilst I break down all the steps I took to create this fun mud monster. First thing to do then is to drag my reference image into the background so I can trace around it. Once in, I lined it up with front view and I delete the default cube because we're not gonna use that. I then go into the object properties for the background image and change the opacity to about 0.2. That way I can still see the grid nice and easily and it's easy to line up. Then I'll move that backwards so I can model in front of it and duplicate it so I can have the side view as well and line that up with side view, of course. Then to start modeling, I'm using an icosphere and I increase the subdivisions of the sphere so it's nice and detailed. I then move it into position and scale it slightly to try and match my character reference and then jump into sculpt mode and start moving it around with the grab brush. It took me a little bit of time to get the shape that I wanted. It was a little bit different to what I expected from the reference images. I then add in some spheres for the eyes. You should really use the UV sphere. It's easier to use than the ICO sphere if you want to do texturing, but it's not a huge difference. And I'm just getting them into position so I can sculpt around them. It's always nice to have the eyes in position and sculpt around the eyes so that you know the structure of your shape is correct. And I use a mirror modifier and I set the mirror object to the character's body to mirror it to the other side. The next stage is to jump across the sculpting workspace, remesh my object, so that's R to get the voxel size, Control R to remesh, and then I start sculpting out and pulling up the mesh around the eyes. Anytime I make any big changes to the mesh, then I'll press Control R to remesh. I've got my statistics up on the top left so you can see the density in terms of the face count. So at the moment we're on 40,000. It's fairly detailed, certainly enough to get the detail that I need for this particular character, but there's certainly no need to go into the millions for this particular model. It really is important to keep it nice and low, as low as you can, because the brushes are more responsive at lower levels. And I spend a fair bit of time getting exactly the shape I want at this point. If you like what you're watching and you want to learn in detail how to do what I'm showing you here, then try out my character pack courses. Three amazing courses for only $30. For the arms and legs, I use the blobbing out technique, as I call it, where you just add in icospheres, place them roughly in position, and then join them all together and remesh. At this point, you're trying to get as close to the mesh as possible in terms of the shape and size, but without any detail. For long, thin shapes like the arm, I'm just using a cube and extruding it out, and then I'll add a subdivision surface to smooth it out. And once the arm's in place, I can use that blobbing out technique once again for the hands and fingers. I tend to do the thumb and the forefinger, and then just copy and paste the forefinger into the other fingers. You can see that I spend a fair bit of time trying to get this right and in the correct position. It's really important to do that before you merge them together, and of course, before you duplicate them, because any inaccuracies are going to be duplicated. It's at this point I mirrored to the other side. You don't have to do it straight away. You can do it at any time, really. I use the body as the mirror object and I just copy the modifier to all the other ones. By selecting them all, make sure the one that is the active object has the mirror modifier and pressing Control L to link. For the lips, I just sculpted in some blobs and just worked on them a bit. The crease brush was really good here and the inflate brush as well. They're two that are very effective for this type of shape. I believe I upped the resolution slightly to create a smoother look, but unfortunately I didn't have my statistics showing at this point. I'm not sure why that was. I was saying earlier that I wanted the mouth open, so I needed to create an opening in the mouth. Now you can, of course, just sculpt this in by moving the lips apart and creating an indent for the mouth but I used the quad remesher to remesh the object and just created a hole in the mesh. I think that was a bit quicker in the long run. The quad remesher is a paid for add-on, but it is one add-on that I would strongly recommend people getting if they do lots of character sculpting. It was a little bit awkward to separate the mouth and I used things like masking to help me select just one part and create an opening. It's much better if you know you're going to have a character with an open mouth to do that from the start. I changed my mind halfway through, hence why I'm creating an opening now. The next part is to start joining these blobs together and sculpting out the detail in things like the hands and the feet. It is probably best to delete the mirror and then re-add it after you've done this. The reason I added the mirror earlier is I wanted to make sure the shape was working and it looked nice when both arms were in. Hands are often an item that you want to add a fair bit of detail to, so it's worth spending a little bit more time on them. And once I'm relatively happy with the hand, then I'll add the arm to it and again, join them together and remesh. I do exactly the same process with the feet. So again, selecting all the shapes, joining them together with Control J and then sculpting them out. 
And once again, this is much easier if you have good positioning of your original blobs. Those that are less confident of their sculpting ability, you might want to blob out a little bit more closely to the actual shapes, uh, work with smaller blobs and add in things like the ankle bone and so forth. For the fishing rod, it's just basic box modeling techniques. To mimic the shape of bamboo, I bevel these edge loops here and extrude them out slightly. I also add a few extra edge loops so when I curve it, it kind of has a curved shape rather than a jaggedy shape. I use proportional editing to curve it round. I did have to mess around with the different types of proportional editing before I got the right curve that I was happy with. For this character, I decided to do some texture painting to give it an interesting skin texture. So I go into the texture painting workspace, add a texture slot at the very top, change the size of the texture to 2048 so it's a bit more detailed, add a green color, and it's now got a texture ready for me to paint. But in order to paint on it, I need to unwrap it and I use a smart UV project, which lays out the 3D object in 2D space so I can paint on it. I start off with these big red lips, which I think are quite funny. I add a little bit of shading with a multiply brush. And to add spots on the character, you can go to the stroke settings, increase the spacing and increase the jitter, and you can just paint on lots of different dots over your character. I did a few color variations because I thought that looked interesting and varied the size a fair bit. At this point, I increased the size of one of the eyes and turned off symmetry and made one eye bigger than the other by sculpting around it again. And I started to work on this smile by adapting the shape slightly. I should definitely have done this a bit earlier actually because I couldn't do any sort of remeshing. I had to work with the shape I'd got because I'd already done the texture painting. It didn't matter too much, but it did make a bit of a difference. I wanted to pose the character, so I did the usual of adding a rigify meta rig putting it in position and then generating a rig out of that. The Rigify add-on is really good because you get a nice rig that's got IK set up. The most awkward bit is always positioning the finger bones in the actual fingers. I use the snap to volume option and that makes it a lot easier. It's not foolproof, but it does work quite well. The difficulty with Rigify is that it's slightly complicated. So you have to know what you can delete and what you can't delete. So in this case, I'm deleting the face bones, but you do have to be a little bit careful there and it takes a tiny bit of experience, but it's certainly worth putting some time in to learn. So once the rig's all in place, I can then generate this special Rigify rig and start posing my character. For the game cartridge, I just did some basic box modeling. So I used a mirror modifier and just built the shape of a cartridge with a reference image on the other screen. Nothing particularly special here. I didn't worry too much about the topology, so I just started editing it and pulling it around, doing some bevels and insets and so forth. I decided to create a silly game called Space Ranger based on one of my other characters I've done recently. So I jumped into Photoshop, made a quick graphic, and then I'm gonna place that on the cartridge. To put this onto the cartridge, it's fairly simple. I just duplicated that inset in the cartridge and then added a texture to it. Then it's just a case of lining up the UVs so it actually covers the image. For the rest of the cartridge to create a dirty grimy color, I unwrapped it and added a texture so I could paint on it once again. This time I found a grimy texture that I downloaded a long time ago and just started painting over the top. It's a nice quick way of getting things to look quite nice, nice and quickly. I'll put a link in the description if you want to learn more about texture painting with these stencils. The mud was quite fun. I used metaballs, so you can just add them in the add menu, bring them in, and when you duplicate them, they kind of stick to each other, so it works well for mud. And you can see me duplicating them here, and it kind of looks like a muddy blob. And it's quite easy to change the shape, so you can duplicate it, put it somewhere else, change the shape slightly, and it works really well. I downloaded a simple mud texture because I was kind of running out of time and just placed it on top. Simple PBR of some mud, but it seemed to do the job. And there we have it, that's how I made this swamp mud monster character. If you've got any questions or thoughts, then comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.